Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to New Orleans, Louisiana, the gambling capital of the South. And we are here for Deuces Wild. I am so excited to start this tournament. This is a special event, and it is going to be wild. Deuces Wild, baby. Let's get this thing started right now. Here we go. Deuces Wild in New Orleans, Louisiana. And the first man the headed down to the ring is the savage John Robb. He is having quite the run here in SWF. If I'm not mistaken, he is uh, currently undefeated right now. And that says a lot. So Savage John Robb's undefeated. The Maverick champion Jay Wolf is undefeated. And Duke Zenda, our Lone Star champion, is also undefeated. So Savage, the Savage John Robb is in great company. I am quite interested to see where he goes from here. That's for sure. I mean, what's going to happen as he progresses? Because undefeated that gets you places that's for sure the next man his tag team partner while he is um, winless he has put up fights in every single one of his matches and the man's a beast I will tell you that he is Ryan Adams Ryan Ryan Adams last match was on the episode four of Shootout where he took a loss to Jackson Montgomery. Uh, before that was in a eight man matchup uh, for the number one contendership of the Maverick Championship. And before that on episode one, he lost his first round matchup for the Lone Star Championship to Vice. But being 0-3 right now has nothing to do with what's going on in this tournament. These two guys hooked up on Twitter. They decided to team up against the, uh, or, uh, excuse me, team up and face off against whoever is coming down their path. And they're going to start this show off here tonight. And it is just going to be wild. And I can't wait to see how this tournament ends up. Ryan Adams teaming up with the savage John Robb is something that is just going to be fantastic. Now, a lot of the guys have already picked their partners. They went in and they picked their own tag team partners. If they didn't pick their own tag team partners, they were assigned a partner randomly. Their opponent here tonight teaming with a, an NSWF uh, staple. This person is brand new. His tag team partner brought him in. This is Daniel Storm. He will uh, be making his debut here tonight and making his debut here at Deuces Wild. And after that, if uh, he wants to continue on with his tag team partner, he can. Otherwise, he will be put into the mix on Shootout. And we're going to see what he can do and what he can bring to SWF. We brought in three new people to kind of even out this tournament. Daniel Storm is one of them. And the other two men we'll see later on tonight. This is gonna be a long night, folks. We have got seven matches. Yeah, seven tag team matches. That is gonna, this video, this telecast is gonna be quite long. Daniel Storm in the ring. He was brought into SWF by everybody's favorite lover, Lance Romance. Together, Lance Romance and Daniel Storm are the tropical... What did I name these guys? Together, they are Tropical Storm Romance. Good grief. And uh, they're going to be taking on the Savage, John Robin, Ryan Adams. I am so excited to see how this turns out. Just, I mean, it's going to be fantastic, I think. Everybody uh, who wasn't, who didn't sign up right immediately or right 
as the announcement announcement was made, they were given tag team partners. Um, SDC and Vice, Evelyn Re Evelyn Reeves and Zach Graves, Leo in the Sleaze, Seb Abbott, Collins and Hunter King, Kid Hades and Draven, Jackson Montgomery, Mar Williams, Mason Foster, Alex Corzo, and Jay Wolf and Ryan Riley all just kind of randomly were chosen. Uh, to tag with some of these people in your tag team partners. So, this tournament is outside of our normal scheduled broadcast. Those will still be coming to you, um, and maybe by the time we get uh, to the next pay-per-view, Ryan Adams and, and John talking to, talking to each other over there, oh, there might be some little dissension going on in that camp. Lance Romance, Daniel Storm taking on the Savage John Robb and Ryan Adams. These guys are fired up. The ref rings the bell and let's get things going. Center of the ring, Daniel Storm starts things off with a nice suplex and immediately goes for the pin, but just a one count. My goodness. Now this is going to be the first time we see Daniel Storm, obviously, but we so we don't know what is going to happen. We don't know how. He is going to uh, react to some of these guys who have already had three, four, five weeks of uh, matches underneath their belts. Nice head scissors. Oh, and a kick to the back by the Savage. And it looks like he's going to bring in Ryan Adams right now. That's going to do wonders for their team, keeping each other fresh. Kick to the midsection. Look at Adams. Got him up. Oh, my goodness. Right into an arm bar. Suplex into an armbar. That was fantastic. Look at this. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Cranking on that wrist. Oh, jeez. You can pull that shoulder out of socket doing something like that. John Robb cheering on his teammate. Now, these guys hooked up on Twitter. Uh, Ryan Adams put it out there that he would like to team with John, and John said, let's do it, brother. Nice gut wrench bomb there by Daniel Storm. So I'm interested to see how these guys uh, turn out here. Oh, man. Standing backflip. Now, the winner of this matchup is going to be facing the first round by team of SDC and Vice. Now that's interesting to me. Um, the seeds were kind of random as Romance is tagged in. Boot to the face. Good Lord. He's not able to get to John Robb. Uh, SDC and Vice were randomly assigned as seed number and they were seed number one. So they got the first round by. There's 15 teams here. So Jeez, huge right hand by Lance Romance. Lance now going to send Ryan into the corner and a huge clothesline. Knocks the man down. He goes, oh. Oh, man, look at Ryan Adams. Big clothesline. He was trying to get over to his partner, and he is going to get there now. These guys are working very well together. I'm happy to see that. John Robb now coming in. Just um, as, as, as I mentioned, this has um, really no effect on our normal broadcast. Wins and losses in this tournament are not going to count towards wins and losses inside our uh, normal shootout episode. This is a completely separate, um, a separate event to, to crown our gunslinger champions and then the winners of course will be brought over and we will have these things going so if you after this tournament if you want to stay with the person you've been assigned please do you will not only be part of the tag team division but you'll also be part of the singles division as well as we are capped at 30 people savage rolls out Oh, he's got Lance. No, Lance stomps on his hand. He's going to tag in Daniel Storm now. 
I remember WWE Hall of Famer and former WWE John back in the ring and quick. Used to express his Got him over. Flips him around and power slam. Tag team matches. Something that's been to Storm and a kick right to the face and a second one. Good Lord. The brutality of John Robb is quite surprising when he came here. And being from Texas and Puma being from Texas, I'm sure these guys have a they have quite the bond. And John now two reverse DDTs. Big shot to the face. Look at this. Up. Oh, no. Daniel reversed it into a bulldog. And now he has got him strapped in with that cross face knee right to the lower back. And John's going to get out of it. Into the corner now. Uh-oh. Ryan Adams thinks it, thinking about coming in. The ref sends him back out. And now Daniel Storm and Lance Romance are literally putting the boots to John Robb. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Big drop kick right to the rib cage by Lance. And he's going to quickly go for the pin. One, no. Just a one count as Storm went over to Ryan Adams. Man, oh man. Savage is in a bad way. Lance goes for an ear clap and misses. Look at John. Oh my God. One, no. What a move that was. Holy cow. Had him up in the fireman's carry and slammed him down for it with a power bomb. John bringing in Ryan Adams. Big clothesline. And oh, Lance dives in and gets the hot tag. Big shot by Storm and a clothesline. Oh, he might have waited just a hair too long. Big running drop kick. That was huge. Right to the chin of Daniel Storm, and he gets a one count. Lance on the outside, not able to run in and help his partner right now. And now John Robb back in. Boot right to the face. Shoulder block by the newcomer. And he's got John by the head. He's going to drag him over to the corner. Yes, he does. No, he puts him up on the ropes. Oh, man, he sends Rob over the top rope. Look at this. Daniel across the ring. Holy cow. What a dive over the top rope, spinning in midair and landing right on the Savage. And a pop-up Hurricane Rana there from Storm. I like what I'm seeing from Daniel Storm. He's getting roughed up pretty bad here. As this is, you know, being his first match. I am really happy. Uh-oh. Oh, man, he went for another pop-up. Hurricane Rana and John made him pay for it. The ref at the count of four. Oh, man. Look at this. Oh, my God. John Robb full on just throwing Daniel Storm right into the turnbuckle. Got the reversal. Now I don't know what's going to happen if this thing ends in a draw. Oh no. Ref is up to 6 or 7 now. Bringing it back Oh wow. Wow, I don't a count out loss would be devastating in this tournament. That is not the way you want to lose. Super kick by Daniel Storm, but John gets out of the way and immediately catches a forearm to the face. Another super kick. And Daniel Storm not going for the pin. Tossing him into the corner. Look at this. Dear God. Dear Lord. Lance just sent. John Robb over the top rope with that reverse suplex. Jeez. Oh, man, what a... I don't even have words for that. And look at Daniel Storm. Two FUs to John Robb. John really has got to get out of this match right now. Get over to his partner, Papa Hurricane Rana. 
Ref is up to six. Oh, geez, John's busted open. Ref telling him to get back in the ring. He wants no part of the outside. And John now going. Lance tags in. Ryan Adams tags in. Oh, he sidesteps the kick and catches Ryan Adams. Oh, geez. Big clothesline by Adams. Huge knee following that up. And another clothesline drops Lance Romance. Oh, my gosh. Lance has been busted open. John Robb stirring on the outside over there. And Lance gave Ryan a little too much time to, to recover here. Oh, geez. Lance over the shoulder. Can he finish the job? Got him up. Huge spine buster to Ryan Adams. He's gonna drag him away. Oh, he goes right for the pin. One, two, no. Ryan Adams kicks out. And now Ryan tags in John Robb. Big knee, jeez. Huge knee to Lance. Just left him stuck out on the ground. Big boxing shots. Oh boy. Across the ring goes Rob. He might have it. Lance got him up here. Drops him down over the knee right on his head. Ryan Adams is on the outside. He's not gonna be able to stop this. Oh wow. Holy cow. John just got out of that one. Man. Here we go. Oh, what a spinning elbow. To Lance, and he doesn't. Oh, look at these big right hands. Shot to the back of the head, but Lance dives out of the way. And he drops Lance over the over his knee. Uh-oh. Rob went for a kick, and Lance blocked him. He's got him in a single-leg Boston Crab here. Ryan, this would be the time to help out your partner. But it doesn't look like he's going to need it. Lance, let's go. Beckoning Rob up to his feet. A kick to the midsection now. Lance has him up. Way up. Sit out. Romance bomb. One, two. And just in the nick of time, Ryan Adams breaks it up and catches a back body drop for his efforts. And Rob with the reversal. We gotta get Ryan out of this matchup here. Ref's gonna start counting. And now John gearing up. He's got him up. Oh boy, way up, power bomb. Right in the center of the ring, one. Two, and just as before, Daniel Storm with a quick last minute reversal, or excuse me, last minute breakup. John is fired up. Daniel Storm on the outside. This could put Tropical Storm Romance out of this tournament. A second huge last ride power bomb from John. He goes down one. Two, and he does. The Savage, John Robb, and Ryan Adams have just started this tournament off with a bang. Beaten and bloodied, John Robb doesn't care. He has gotten the victory for his team. Ryan Adams is pumped about that. John says, you deserve it to get up there. These two guys are going on to face SDC and Vice. Your winners, ladies and gentlemen, the Savage John Robb and Ryan Adams. Well, here we go, folks. What a matchup that was between Tropical Storm Romance and John Robb and Ryan Adams. And of course, Ryan Adams and John. John Robb is on a tear, folks. I, I, cannot, I can't believe the newcomers come in here and has taken over. But right now, this matchup has been back and forth on Twitter. 
You see Siler Jordan right there. You see James Frost. This is Thriller and the Clutch. And my goodness, between the two men, these guys have accomplished quite a few things in other federations. This is the first time, actually, that's not true. The first time they teamed up is when Tyler Jordan and James Frost took on Alex Corzo and Seb Abbott, where Tyler Jordan caused Alex Corzo to tap out. This is the first time they're teaming up in an official capacity where they are entered into anything, or they're officially a team now. Tyler Jordan. We all know the new man of Tyler Jordan and what he means here in SWF. He, he is brought SWF to a, a an upper level and and I just I know it pains Puma to, to even hear such things he's probably in the back throwing water bottles and such but it's true Tyler Jordan has done wonderful things here in SWF and for SWF their opponents though look at the it is the fallen kingdom ladies and gentlemen Malcolm Black on the left Bruiser Brad on the right it is about to get vicious up in here bruiser brad over seven feet 500 the man is humongous he is huge and just comparing him to malcolm black here and even comparing him to okay brad you having some issues getting in the ring easy there brother watching him comparing them to siler and James, my goodness. And Brad is fired up. And these fans are fired up. <clears throat> Siler's going to start things off against, oh, geez, against Bruiser Brad. Here we go. The ref rings the bell. They hook up in the center of the ring. And Jordan, a couple of forearms seem to not phase him at all. Look at the, look at the speed and the deception from Siler Jordan. Well, that was a pretty damn good move from Siler Jordan. And face for, look at the size of Brad's head when it was between the legs of Jordan. Good God almighty. Jordan sends Brad into the corner, but Brad's gonna reverse it, Jesus. He's gonna blast Frost and a sling blade there from Siler. He did, Brad didn't even go through the ropes. He went over the top rope and blasted Frost down to the mat, down to the ground. Good God almighty. Jordan now is gonna throw Brad into the corner. Brad dives out of the way. Siler jumps back in just in time to get grabbed by the back of the neck. And a snapmare, big kick to the back. Those humongous boots. He's gonna bring in a more manageably sized man. In Malcolm Black, look at the driver. Tyler Jordan, oh, I was going to say in control, but it, oh, good. How many rotations did Malcolm Black do there? Flipping him over, big knee right to the chin. Tyler Jordan is lethal with those knees, folks. Black catches the kick. Whoa, immediately hooks him up. Is he done? And... Look at this. Look at him just wailing away on the midsection. Frost cheering on his teammate. Oh, Siler looked to be going for maybe a power bomb. And Black reversed out of that one into the corner. Oh, geez. Tagging in the big man. Look at this. Oh, no. And oh, geez. Big clothesline. And Siler's trying to make it over to his teammate, James Frost, and he, was been, he wasn't able to. That could hurt him in this match. Jordan hasn't been able to tag out yet. That could, oh, Brad misses. Siler sends Brad into the corner. Oh, elbow to the face, look at this. Using that, oh my God, using that post and blasting Brad right in the face. Oh man. Oh man, a ha the hangover. And uh, and now Brad locked up. 
look at Brad. Rope break, too close to the rope. Brad's head is as big as Siler's torso. Good God almighty. Into the corner goes Brad. Are we gonna see James coming in here? We do. Kick, or excuse me, a knee to the midsection. James follows it up. It's gonna take both men to get this monster over. Uh-oh, Brad gets the tag in to Malcolm Black. Ducks does Frost and hooks him up. Back body drop and a kip up from Frost. Now, James Frost hasn't really been having the, oh, geez, what a close line. Having the best go here in SWF so far. He is uh, currently one and two. Wow, what a move there to the middle turnbuckle. James Frost lost um, his first matchup here in SWF to SDC in the Lone Star Championship match. And then he lost that, or he was part of the losing team in that eight-man uh, battle royal to, to uh, crown the no, one of the number one contenders, which turned out to be Bruiser Brad, incidentally. And his only win is when he teamed up here against or with, excuse me, Siler Jordan. Nice German suplex there. Turning him around and it turns him inside out with a huge clothesline. Immediately though, picking up Black, he's gonna send him into the corner. Boot right to the face. And the clutch coming through for his team. Helping Siler Jordan out a little bit. Calling, oh no. And immediately, Immediately goes in to that triangle hold, but he is going to work himself out of it and just blasting Malcolm. Three hard shots right to the face. Nice reversal there from Black. Oh, boy. Oh, he reversed it. Frost was able to reverse it, going for his partner, but... Frost stops Malcolm Black. Tag team history was made when the first ever and look at this. Bam! Slamming that arm right into the mat. What are we going to see here from Frost? Dragging Black away from Brad. And a knee right across the chin. Going for the pin now. One. No, just a one count. That was interesting. The ref was in between Brad and the pin, so that could have ended and that could have uh, helped thriller in the clutch down go oh oh knee and a super kick right to the ear of malcolm black bruiser brad tried to go for a punch and misses siler i'm not sure this is the smartest move trying to pin malcolm right next to brad malcolm oh reversal from brad or for, excuse me from siler and Oh my God, what a DDT. Completely spikes Malcolm Black. And now just rubbing the forearm across the face of Black. Siler Jordan. Oh, face first into the mat. And Malcolm Black has been busted open. And you know what time it is. Siler with the point. Big knee. Good Lord, he got that knee all the way up. Oh, instead of going for the pin, though, he should have probably gone for the pin. But it doesn't matter. Reversal and another knee across the chest. The blood pouring out of the face of Malcolm Black right now. Look at this. And another knee right to the chin. Siler goes for the pin. One, two. Oh, a two count. Brad was a little slow to get in. And, geez. James gets tossed like a sack of potatoes by Brad. The WTF lock is locked in, but is it too close to the ropes? It is. It is, and Malcolm Black's able to get out of it. Look at the blood. Dragon suplex. My gosh. And again, rubbing the forearm across the forehead of Malcolm Black. And he is trying to get to Brad, and he does. Siler Jordan lets it happen and immediately sends Brad into the corner. Whoa. Hooking up the big man in the tree of woe now. What's he doing? 
this is a true Where's Siler going? Brad is trying to get out of it, and he... Oh, no, he's going coast to coast, folks. Right into the ear. He blasts Bruiser Brad right in the head. My God, Malcolm Black slowly stirring to the outside here. This might be the opportunity Thriller and the Clutch are looking for. This looks like a baby on a bear right now. And it's broken up by Malcolm Black. Frost. Uh-oh. Oh, jeez. Frost gets turned inside out. And now it seems Siler Jordan's all alone. Bruiser Brad has got the bear hug on Siler Jordan. This has put so many people away. Is it going to put Siler Jordan away here tonight? No. No, and thank goodness for his team because James is outside on the mat. Just a two count. Siler Jordan's essentially all alone right now. Oh, my gosh. What does Bruiser Brad have in store? And a nice strong drag reversal from Jordan. What a close. Oh good Lord. Turn Brad inside, or Siler inside out. Over the top he goes. Oh, man, what a spine buster that was. Siler better hope that Frost gets to him soon because this is the beginning of the end right here, folks. A reversal. Oh, no. Siler might have been going for Malcolm Black there and came up a little short. A big clothesline to the back of the head. And no, Siler gets pushed down to the mat. Brad picks him up, though. Sends him into the corner. And here it comes. Boots to the chest. Massive boots, might I add. And these guys are really putting it to Siler Jordan. Oh my God, look at the size of his boot. It's a covering up his whole chest. Malcolm Black, big drop kick to the rib cage. That might be it. That might be it. The ref gets down one, and not only does Frost break up the pin, but he takes out the ref as well. Knee to the face, Siler Jordan's gotta get out of this matchup, folks. He has endured some serious punishment. He's got to get Frost in here. Nice reversal there. Reversal though from Black. A float over neck breaker. Jordan, he does. He makes his way over to Frost. And Frost tried to slide kick Black's feet out from underneath him. Oh, a little gyration. And a neck breaker to Frost. The momentum Frost had coming in is gone. You gotta believe this one's over. Look at this. Oh man, drops him down and huge stomp. Frost is done. They're done. That has to be it. Look, here comes Siler Jordan breaking up the pin at the last second, my God. Neck breaker to Jordan though. And again, rolling outside the ring. Frost with the reversal, but catches a big knee right to the gut. Oh, Brad going with a for a huge chop. Oh, and a spear. The spear from a man half his size going for the pin right now. One, two, Malcolm Black not coming in. Holy cow. That was like 2.9. Brad with another kitchen sink. Right to the gut. Frost needs Jordan to come and oh, nice uppercut there. And again, trying to take the legs out of Black, but Black one step ahead of that move. In back into the corner. Uh oh. This has been a battle. And here we go. Big shot to the face. No way. What is this? Look at Brad flying through the air. 500 pounds just came crashing down on James Frost, and that has got to be it. Here comes Siler Jordan. Oh my God, Jordan did it again. Jordan did it again. That's it. That's it right there. Oh man, but not going for the pin. Oh boy. 
Siler Jordan has been saving this match over and over again. And now in a single leg Boston Crab, but he's too close to the ropes. Holy cow. Into the corner now. He might have it. And now it's Malcolm Black's turn. Big leg right across the chin. This is it. And going for the pin. Here comes Siler Jordan again. One, two. That's it. Siler was not able to get into the ring as fast this time. And the Fallen Kingdom get the victory. Jeez Louise. That was insane. That was insane. Bruiser Brad flying through the air. Siler Jordan stopping pin attempt after pin attempt. What a match that was. Holy cow. Well, folks, this next matchup is one of the stranger ones here tonight. Only strange for this reason. We are about to see the Sons of Carnage, Jesse Newman and James Gaines III take on Ryan Riley, who is also in the Sons of Carnage, and Jay Wolf, who is a close friend of the Sons of Carnage. Uh, the tag team gods thought it necessary to have these men face off against each other. I, for one, think it's great for business pit friends against friends in hopes of getting championship gold. Now in this matchup, we have what we what we have similar to the previous matchup. Jay Wolf is seven foot tall, six foot 11, something like that, 385. He may not be 500 pounds, but he is huge. And that might play a big part in the victory of this matchup. So who knows what is gonna happen. Deuce is wild on those chairs. Do things we've never the first seen three rows get to take the those chairs home and uh, do whatever the hell they do with chairs they take home from arenas. I, I don't know. But coming to the ring, look at Jay. Look at the Maverick Championship around the waist of Jay Wolf. Look at the Maverick. It looks like it's a child's champion. The thing is so small around this humongous man. Jay, of course, won the Maverick Championship at the last pay-per-view and honestly I don't know guys I don't know who's going to be able to stop it I don't know who is going to be able to stop him he goes into Gold Rush after beating six or seven other men then he beats Bruiser Brad he beats Bruiser Brad who we just saw and then goes into Gold Rush and beats Seb Abbott for the Maverick Championship, and boy does that thing look tiny around his waist. That might be more of a uh, hold it in your hand title there, Brad. Or excuse me, Jay. Or maybe over the shoulder, who, who knows. But James is gonna start this thing off against Jay. The ref rings the bell, and let's and get go. going this here. Match is going to be heated, oh man. Guys, oh God, knocking the big man off of his feet. Now we know one thing about James Gaines. This man can fight. He's like Leo McKay. He is small, but God, he is brutal and quick. Look how high, I mean, I mean he missed. Look how high he jumped in the air. Oh, big shots to the abdomen of Wolf and not today, he says, knocks him to the ground quickly. Single leg Boston Crab. Is he done? And wow, he got just out. kicks yeah, the big man away. Just kicks him off. Jay Wolf on one knee is the same height as James Gaines. I'm going to be talking about that a lot, I have a feeling. These guys going up against the Bruiser Brads and the Jay Wolf Shali. Ryan Riley might be coming in. He is coming in to his, oh, boom. Nice tag team move from Wolf and Riley. And Gaines is able to get Newman in the ring. Big boot right to the chest and a single leg drop kick to the fellow 
Sons of Carnage member. Remember, all three of these guys here are in the Sons of Carnage. I'm, I'm quite interested in all of this. Big shot to the midsection now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Over the top, sending face first goes Riley. But Riley's going to take the legs out of his teammate here and tag in the big man. Oh, geez. Jesse Newman almost gets thrown over the top rope, and then Jay Wolf with a big knee across, excuse me, knee across the chest. And Jesse trying to take the legs out of the bit. I mean, that's a great strategy. Uh oh. What, are, what is Jesse doing here? Shot to the midsection, misses. Oh, look at this. Double underhook. Oh, man, look at Jay, the strength. Driving him down hard into the mat. Oh, and Jesse's going to slide out, quickly slide back in as Jay is taunting. Neck breaker from the much smaller man. I don't know how he's going to get him up in the air or anything else. Ducks the clothesline, and he delivers a big left hand. And into the corner of Sons of Carnage, the buddies here. What do they got in store for their friend? Look at this. What's he doing? Oh, bam! And then he drags him out and hits him with the Northern Lights. James, oh, kick to the gut. And he's got him up and slams him down hard under the mat. And for the pin, one, two, and he kicks out. Jesse knew his boy had it. So he didn't even bother. Dodges the kick from Jay now. He's going to spin him around, send him into the corner. And another tag. Look at this. And oh, right into the. Oh my God. It don't matter how big you are. You catch a knee to the chin. DDT. You catch a knee to the chin. You're going to be seeing stars. Going for the pin now. Ryan Riley not coming in. The big man. Kick out at two. Oh, cow. I mean, how do you even defend against such a monster? Big cutter, and Jay is busted open. And now everyone runs into the ring, and Ryan Riley breaks it up. Oh, and, and Riley gets out before anybody can get a hold of him. And, oh, it looked like Newman might have been going for the tag, but he's going to... No, he waited a little too long to get to Wolf, and Wolf misses with that big clothesline. Oh! And drop kick right to the side of the head. Sons of Carnage have got Jay's number here tonight, folks. Just raking. Look, like I said in the last one, look at the size of the head on Jay Wolf. Jesse's got him over one and just a one count this time before it's broken up. James going after Ryan. Oh, Jesse might be going after him anyway. No, he rolls outside the ring. Oh, he does go after him and takes the leg out from under Ryan Riley. Back into the ring. That might have given Wolf a little bit of too much time to recuperate. But Wolf's got to get out of this match, I think. One referee is here he goes. Got him up. The Blood Moon, I believe this is called, and he Impact. drops Jesse Newman. Sure that spike left. right on his head. He's the the ref is down. down one, two. Nobody's coming in, and fire, Jesse able to get out of it. This is the team the point, they the call themselves Blood Moon. Here. Jay and, and Ryan, oh, man. Into the corner now. Big body. Following that up, look at that nice Taking move there, the nice spear here. type move. Like that that make him so Jesse rolls out of the way, doesn't immediately go for the tag, his partner wanted in. Oh! He's in a very bad way here, guys. It looked like that was all Jay, and then Jesse comes back with that insecurity. He's gonna roll outside. I don't know if you wanna be outside with Jay Wolf. Okay. 
Tossing him back in. Not letting Jay get the tag to Ryan Riley. Ducks the clothesline though. Belly to belly overhead. Holy cow. And a big headbutt there from the six, almost seven footer. Taking the legs out though. Jesse's got to get out. And Jay has got, all these guys have got to get out. Big slap. Oh man, almost. Almost close enough to send Jesse over the top rope. Arm drag though by Newman. Look out! Look at this! Look at the size! Oh my gosh! Go in for the DDT and quickly for the pin one, two, and not just broken up by Riley. But this time James has Riley and sends him over the top rope. And look at Jesse. He's going up. We know what that means. Big stomp. And quickly running back and trying to get the pin in a breakup, though, by Riley. And Riley pushes him away and gets a, neck, a backbreaker for his effort. Holy cow. Big clothesline there. Followed up by an elbow. Reversed into the corner. He dodges it out of the way. Of the way. Big kick right to the chin. Backbreaker there by Jesse Newman. Teammates are back on the ring apron. Stomping on the hand of Jay Wolf now. Oh, raking in the forearm. It's going to make that open wound bleed more and more. No. Look at that. Holy cow. Big shot. There by Jesse, but it doesn't. Pay. Oh, hanging him over in the knees, multiple knees to the to the head, knocking Jesse all the way down. And Jay going around on the outside now, maybe just trying to stop seeing stars, get his composure back. Jesse lays out James and Ryan on the aprons. And just as Jesse starts to stir, here comes the Wolf. Oh my goodness, shot after shot. Oh, reversal there from Jesse. Kick to the midsection now. Oh, Wolf went for a chop. Oh, and he catches him that time. Back into the ring goes Jesse. Wolf. Got him up. He's going to send him into the corner. Big, huge body splash there. Look at this. From the ground, deadlift. Big power bomb. Uh oh. Ryan Riley wants the tag. Headbutt there by Jay. And Jesse Newman's using those ropes to get back up to his feet. Oh, now Jesse's been busted open with that elbow. And look at this, seemingly out of nowhere. That blood moon spike. Jake crawling to his feet and now down for the pin. He might be blocking his own teammate from getting into the ring. And look at Ryan dropping J James right on his neck and a drop kick. Oh, geez. This could be it for the Sons of Carnage face first goes Jesse Newman. And without, look at the blood. Without James Gaines there to stop it. Two, and just like that, Wolf and Riley are your winners tonight against the Sons of Carnage. My goodness. So it looks like the Sons of Carnage can't, he can't really compete with their own team or their own friends here. But Ryan Riley and Jay Wolf did a fantastic job. They're going on to face the Fallen Kingdom. Jay Wolf and Brad again. Our next matchup here at Deuces Wild. It includes four men who really don't care to be a team with each other. It was voiced on Twitter that Mason Foster 
Uh, didn't really care to be part of a team with Alex Corzo. Why was I teamed up with Alex Corzo? And the answer was, if you didn't pick a teammate in the allotted time, you were randomly assigned a teammate. And so, Mason Foster is teaming up with the former Rebellion and former Lone Star champion, Alex Corzo. And it seems, okay, it seems they're gonna try to make it work. I mean, you team up with somebody you didn't ask for. Um, you, you try to do your best in these matches, and what happens if you win, you know? What happens if Mason Foster and Alex Corzo become the tag team champions? Oh, okay, the lights go out. And here comes the New Jersey Devil, Elliot. Oh. Collins, oh my God. The New Jersey Devil, Elliot Collins just standing there and here comes his tag team partner Hunter King now both of these gentlemen are currently 0-2 Mason Foster's 0-2 as well Alex Corzo 1-1 but these two guys Elliot and the King Elliot Collins on the right Hunter King on the left Hunter King has been part of SWF uh, for quite some time as well. And even last season, didn't have the best go of things. Uh, he was moved from Rebellion to Uprising and then started getting on a roll. Started getting on a roll. So these two guys thought it was best to team up with each other and see if they can't get some victories under their belt. The, they will face the winner of Ebony and Ivory, Amari Williams and Jackson Montgomery, which I freaking love that tag team, and Darkness Falls, Kid Hades, and Draven, Lord Draven. But right now, that's getting ahead of things. Alex Corzo is going to start things off with Elliot Collins, and here we go, the former hey, Lone Star champ. Big shot started. to the midsection, yeah, and no, Collins like not having any of that in my match. big old clothesline there. I like that. But Colin, or excuse me, Corzo with a backbreaker. Collins with the European uppercut now. Into the corner, follows him. Big elbow and an insecurity. Corzo with the reversal, my goodness. Oh, look at Corzo, look at him. Oh, spinning. Collins around and dropping his knee right across the forehead. And a kick right into the back of the thigh. Oh, that cannot feel good. And here we go. Oh, and Collins delivers an elbow and an insecurity of his own. Whatever you can do, I can do better, he says. Knees up. Hit Corzo in a famouser. What a move that was. And he gets a clothesline delivered to Collins right when Collins gets back up to his feet. Alex Corzo dragging Collins over to his corner. He gets there just... Oh, nice job there and a cutter. Backflip into a cutter. Very nice move. But are we going to see him bring in Mason Foster? It sure looks like it. Face first into the corner. No, a reversal kick to the face. And now Collins has got Corzo by the back of the head. Snapmare. He's and a kick to the here. back. That's soccer kick. He's going to go over and bring in the king. Hunter King. Looks a little bit different than, front, than in the past. His beard's a little longer. His hair's a little longer. But we're going to see if a different look brings us a different hunter. Kick to the back. Corzo now tagging in Mason Foster. Now we haven't seen much of Mason Foster this season as a member of the Fallen Kingdom or otherwise. Oh, elbow to the back, off the ropes. Here he comes, Hunter, no! 
Oh my goodness, it looked like Foster was going for some sort of wheelbarrow move. But Hunter King reverses it into a massive German and a big clothesline. I didn't realize he had such a glass jaw. Holy cow. Into the corner goes Foster, and he's going to reverse Hunter King. Kick to the midsection, though. Sends Hunter in back into the corner of Corzo, and look at this. What are they doing? Oh! Kick right to the knee and a big kick by Foster. Falling up with a leg drop across the back of the head. Corzo has got it. Oh, geez. Oh! Hunter. Oh, God, that clothesline is, is just devastating. Arm drag getting Hunter King out of the bad side of town there not a bad idea neck breaker following it up with a dub, double underhook suplex Hunter King is in a bad way right now look at this hooks him up and drops him down onto the mat one two no just a one count that could have been it for Hunter King we've seen that oh nice block of the insiguri we've seen Corzo use that move here comes Hunter King, double underhook. Oh my goodness! That twisting cutter from Hunter King drags him back into his own corner this time. Going for the pin. One, two, no, just a two count. Wow. That was a pretty intense move. Arm breaker drop by Corzo. He's going to send. Hunter into his corner here. Oh man. Boots and boots and boots and boots. Mason Foster tags in and it starts delivering the boots as well. Corzo right back. Oh man. This is a go-to move for these tag teams. Here comes Foster. Drop kick to the rib cage of Hunter King. He's looking at it. He goes for the pin. One, here comes Elliot. I don't, couldn't tell if Elliot kicked, uh, helped uh, break that up or not. Look at this, look at Elliot and a, oh man. Face first. Goes Corzo and he's busted open. Foster now with the leg kicks to Hunter King. He dives out of the ring and Foster hit his own teammate. Oh no. And what a body slam. Massive scoop slam there from Hunter King. Big uppercut. And he tags in Collins. Oh, Collins misses with a right hand into the corner. And Corzo, um, excuse me, Foster goes for a splash and misses. And Collins hits him with a sling blade. Shoulder block there. This is insanity. These teams that have never teamed up before are doing damn good as partners. I must say. A lot of pride on the line here in this tag I must say that look at Foster taking down Collins and dropping right on top of the knee now. Collins rolls out of the way. Drag it. No. Full Nelson face buster, but oh geez. I was gonna say Foster kips up, and this might be the end of this. The Collins cutter, right there, big time lands it, and look at look at Corzo. Two, three, that would have been a three count. Corzo comes in and distracts the referee though. Face. Oh, shot to the face. Oh, rolls through it and kicks Foster in the head. And here comes Corzo again. Boom, this move. Busted open Corzo. Oh, my gosh. Collins is on a roll right now. Collins dragging Foster away. Uh oh, oh no, curb stomp, curb stomp by Elliot Collins. And, oh, okay, jumps down and just starts wailing away on the face. 
He blows a little kiss to Foster. Are we about to see another? No! Reversal by Foster. But Collins catches him and sends him into the corner knees by Mason Foster. Oh, man. Kick to the midsection, following it up with a kick to the side of the head. Can Foster get over to Corzo? He cannot. But he gets a reversal, nice knee. Corzo's over there patiently waiting. He wants back in this matchup. Look at this. Look at Foster. He has got Collins by the legs, twisting him up. Is he going to be able to get out of this? He, releases he lets it. go. He Collins does not end. tap out, and here it. comes the former Lone Star champion. And he quickly Shoulders goes down, down for the pin. Two, and Hunter it? King breaks it up. That, that might have been a three count, three count had Foster stopped back. Hunter King. And Hunter now rolling out of the ring. Corzo working that arm. And a leg drop right across the throat. Look at this. Deadlift. Big sit out power bomb to Collins. Oh my gosh. With King out on the outside, Collins is at a huge disadvantage right now. Kick to the back. Corzo's gonna pick him up. Possibly take him into his corner. He does, sends him face first. No, Collins with the reversal. He's gonna get out on that side of town. But Hunter King is not there. And Corzo reverses it. And he's gonna send him right back across the tracks. And a shot, no reversal, kick to the face. Hunter King still not there. Knees to the back by Corzo. Are we going to see a tag? We finally do. Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That could be it. Dragon screw by Mason Foster. Oh, my goodness. Got him up. Huge slam from the Welshman. Oh, what a reversal though by Collins. Hunter King not paying attention. And look, and rolling through it again. Working the knee of Mason Foster. Is Collins gonna be able to get over to King? He's not. Uh-oh, he's got him in it. Look at this, a figure four. A figure four. To Elliot Collins, is Mason Foster going to make him tap out here? And the unlikely team, he does! Elliot Collins has tapped out. And this band of misfits and unlikely team of Mason Foster and Alex Corzo have just won and are moving on to the next round. What? What? Alex Corzo and Mason Foster... We might be seeing something here in SWF. Your winners, ladies and gentlemen. Out there and making sure everybody's entertained. You've got to win your matches. And that's exactly what happened here. A will to win was on display. Guys, I have to say, that was an amazing match. What an unlikely win from Corzo and Foster. But coming up right now, Probably one of my more favorite tag teams in this tournament. Ebony and Ivory. Jackson Montgomery and Amari Williams. And Jackson is fired up. Amari is happy to be here, happy to be involved, but I'm not quite sure how he feels about being, a, being teamed up with this redneck, this just rough neck of a man in Jackson Montgomery. He is fired up to look at him. He is pumped. I'm excited. I mean, I just they don't go together at all. And it's just a funky, goofy tag team. I'm excited to see what they bring to the table here tonight. So far, we've had some fantastic matches and some unexpected victories. We've 
still have three matches to go, including this one. So coming next down to the ring. These guys were paired up for obvious reasons. Kid Hades and Lord Raven pumped again. They're fired up. These guys are Darkness Falls. You see Lord Draven there in the background. Now, Kid Hades, over the last two seasons, while he hasn't had the greatest run, he has definitely become a household name with his rivalry with Calypso, his rivalry with um, Leo McKay lately. Things, things, you know what I'm saying? So, Lord Draven came in last season, had a couple of uh, fellows with him there. They did not make the transfer over, but Lord Draven definitely did. Let's see who comes out on top. Is it going to be Darkness Falls? Is it going to be Ebony and Ivory? My God. Jackson. Whoa. And starting things off. Hades thought he was going to try to get in there quick. Montgomery had other ideas. Nice quick Samoan drop there from Jackson. He's going to get Hades up. Arm dragged though from Hades. Oh, man. Can you imagine? Amari is just beside himself that he has had to team up with this man. Oh, geez, what a spine buster there. And I, don't, I just, what if they win? You know, I've been saying that. What if, what if, what if? You know, what if Corzo and, and Foster win? What if? Jackson Montgomery and Omari Williams win these these tag teams that were thrown together and not picked by one another. It's just uh, an interesting thing to see, and I'm excited to know how this is going to turn out. Oh man, Jackson ran right into that DDT. Nice move there from Hades. He's going to tag in Draven in a un eventful exit from the ring. Uh-oh. Knocks Jackson down and quickly picks the legs up. Hooks him up in the sharpshooter. Jackson looks like he's swimming. Well, I mean, not phased at all by the sharpshooter and Draven goes right into that middle rope. Oh, man. Drops Jackson down hard on his head. A lot of twist in action going in that one. Amari wanted in, but Jackson wasn't able to get there. Nice reversal there from Montgomery. Oh man, the Bow Dazzler. That's a, probably one of my more favorite moves as well. Jackson's gonna drag Draven over just a little bit closer. Here comes Amari Williams. Up to his feet now is Draven. Williams sending Draven over the top rope and immediately taunting. And the crowd loves it. What a fun first night here of Deuces Wild. After our three matches and the first round ends, that will be the end of night one. We will soon follow it up with night two where we finish out the tournament with round two, semifinals, and the finals. So I hope you got your popcorn. I hope you're strapped in. A lot's going to be going down in these two nights. The referee up to six now. And neither man trying to make it back to the ring. This isn't any kind of elimination style. Oh, eight now. These guys, I don't know what's going to happen. We're going to have to restart this matchup. If a double count out and nine and Amari gets back in. Holy cow. Draven looked like he was trying to crawl over to Hades. Kick to the midsection. No, and a big clothesline chopping Williams down. And now Draven with the taunts. My goodness, that was a huge clothesline. Oh, Draven tries to put Amari over the top rope of the clothesline, and he's not having that. Stun gun to the top rope. Look at, oh, nice scoop slam there from Williams. And a big knee right across the chest. 
lower throat area. And right in front of Hades saying, look at that, what you gonna do about it? Oh. Jeez, what a spear. Draven gets right up and spears Williams hard down to the mat. Got him up again. Boom, head first. We saw him just do that to Jackson and quickly for the pin. Two, no. Just a two count. I mean, like right as he hit two, Williams kicks out. Draven now gonna return the favor and hang Omari Williams over the top rope. Jackson tried to get in there. Not successful. Just huge knees, just bombs raining down right under the ear of Omari Williams. And he's gonna get tossed into the corner of Darkness Falls. And these guys go into town now on Omari Williams. It seems like this is a go-to move for the tag teams in this tournament. As they tag each other in and out, in and out. And now Hades tags in and delivers that big drop kick, that final blow right to the rib cage. And he goes down for the pin. Here comes Jackson, one. Oh, Jackson hit the ref. The ref is out, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not sure if he even, if he even uh, had any impact on that other than hitting the ref. And look at Omari getting stretched out. Oh, he rolls out of the way, but catches a roundhouse to the side of the head and blocks that kick. Big rolling elbow, and Hades goes down like he's been hit by a sniper shot. Mari kicked to the midsection. Look at this. Up. Oh, into a cutter. Into a cutter. That power bomb into a cutter. Goes for the pin now. One, two, and Draven is able to get there. And look at the strength of Amari Williams rolling through into a power bomb. My goodness. Big clothesline. A second. And he ducks Hades' clothesline and into a power slam. And now look with Draven on the outside. The punt. He has just kicked Hades' head clean off. Got him up now and drops him over the top rope, throat first. Draven stirring on the outside. This might be it for Hades. We're gonna see it again from Williams. Power bomb into the cutter, center of the ring. Draven not quite up to his feet yet. The ref gets down. One, two. Oh, and a two count. Draven didn't need to get in there. And Hades is able to kick out at two. Amari looked like he was gonna go tag Jackson in, but thought thought otherwise. Kick to the midsection. Sending Amari across the ring into a big hip toss. Nice move there. This time Amari crawling towards his corner, but Hades shuts that down. Oh boy. That rolling, I'm prettier. That could be it for Amari Williams. No, he immediately, Dra Draven gets tagged in right away. That's surprising. Look at that nice back body drop. I'm surprised Hades didn't go for the pin. And now they seem to have lost their chance. Williams brings Jackson in. Kick to the midsection. Got him up, no. Draven rolls through, hooks him up for the pin. One, two, and a two count. Oh, and Jackson reverses it. The ref counts in a reversal. Again, two count after two count. These guys are rolling through. And finally, Jackson kicks out and gets loose. Into the corner. Oh, geez, what a shoulder. Right to the lower back. But Jackson not having it delivers a shoulder of his own. And oh my God, Jackson went for a spear. And Draven ducked and just chopped him down. 
Tags in Hades now. Oh boy. I don't think I've ever seen anybody reverse a spear like that. Hades, this is it. This put Leo McKay away. Go to Hades. That huge cutter. He rolls Jackson over in good position here. One, two, and Amari's able to stop it. Uh-oh. Hades has got Amari up, and Draven punches him in the face. Face first goes Jackson. He's busted open. He is busted open. The blood pouring from that bandana knee right to the face. And now Jackson, he's able to get there. He tags Amari in. Wow. Amari goes for a clothesline, and Hades catches him with a knee right to the chin. Up top, big elbow all the way down to the outside. Darkness falls with the current advantage. Commentator's curse. Omari able to get loose from that. Toss Hades back into the ring. Hades dives and catches Draven. Oh! Backbreaker there from Williams. And he is a taunting fool. He has got all the confidence in the world. Oh, elbow right to the jaw. Big clothesline sends Williams over the top rope. Everybody's on the floor. Look at Draven, though. Oh, my God, he misses the knees. Williams looks to take advantage. Elbow again to the side of the head. My gosh. Big drop kick. These guys, Darkness Falls are putting it on the line. Huge. Huge diving moves to the outside. Ref the count of four. And Draven comes in. Here comes Jackson, though. Big clothesline to Draven. He's going to pick him up. And this time he lands the spear. He quickly goes for the pin. Hades is nowhere to be found. He slides in. Oh, my God. Right at the last second. Right at the last second, Hades breaks it up. Back in the ring now is Jackson. And look at this. He's got Draven by the hair, by the dreadlocks. Into a whip before picking him right back up, though. Oh, into a nice fireman's carry reversal from Draven. Now he's got Montgomery sending him over the top rope. Draven, you're over there two against one. I'm not sure if this is smart. Amari seems to be out of it, though. Jackson's going to push Draven away. Go for a chop and miss. Reversal from Jackson. Forearm spins Draven around. He gets put back in the ring. Chop right into the Adam's apple by Jackson. Jackson is quite fond of those chops. Here comes Kid Hades. Jackson rolls back into the ring at six. Into the corner, what is Jackson gonna do here? That bandana really soaking up that blood. Oh man, diving on him with a Luthez. And raining right hands down onto Kid Hades. Quickly going for the pin. One, two, no. Good thing Draven didn't need to come in there. Oh! Hades going for that big bicycle knee and Jackson's not having it. And now just standing there. Ebony looking over Ivory's shoulder. Jackson getting Hades up. Oh, geez. It's a redneck jackhammer. No! Reversed and over the top goes Jackson and Hades follows him. This time though, Amari is with it it could quickly be two on one here Draven back up to his feet Omari back into his corner look at this what on earth Jackson is a human pretzel right now 
And Hades says, Omari, watch this, and kicks Jackson right into his butt's hole. Hades has got Jackson up. Flapjack. Face first. Whoa. Quickly rolls out of that one. And Jackson's going to take Hades over to the corner. And we're about to see some tag team action here. Drop toe hold. Elbow to the lower back. First time we've seen these guys really work together. Other than breaking up the pin. Kick to the midsection. This is the third time we're going to see this. Pop-up cutter. Powerbomb cutter by Williams. He goes down for the pin. Jackson got his back turned. Two. And that's it. That is it. Omari kneels down in front of Kid Hades. Look at this. America's sweetheart Jackson Montgomery and a forgotten one Omari Williams. And they shake hands. This team might be a match made in heaven. Coming up next is the second to last match of the night. And it is one of the teams that I think is just absolutely fantastic. That is the team of Money Talk. Your Lone Star champion, Duke Zenda and Brett Storm. Now, Duke Zenda, if you've been following along, won the Lone Star Championship Tournament and the number one contendership to face Siler Jordan at Gold Rush. Siler Jordan got a little cocky. And when Alex Corzo came back, wondering where his shot was, Siler said, you know what, I'll give it to you. But due to an interference by Duke Zenda, Alex Corzo beat Siler Jordan on episode four of Shootout. And Duke thought he would be facing Alex at Gold Rush, but Puma made that a triple threat. And in the end, Duke Zenda came out on top. Brett Storm was very vocal on Twitter about not getting his due. Where is the opportunities? Where are the opportunities? He's finally gotten his opportunities, and now he is showing us that he can make the most of them. So Brett Storm and Duke Zenda in the ring, money talk. This team has come back for this tournament, and they were part of SWF in the last season. Oh man, I, I'm very excited to have these guys back in SWF. I went out and sought them out to bring them back just for this tournament. And they will of course be joining the roster. The birth, ladies and gentlemen. Keith Alexander on the left, Coda Fish on the right. These guys do not play around. They do not fool around. These guys are some of the best tag team competitors on the scene. And we are going to see that here tonight. I am sure of it. Teaming up for quite some time. This is going to be the first time for Duke Zenda and Brett Storm to be a team. But the birth have teamed up and been a team for a while. We're going to see how that plays into the tenacity of Brett Storm and the cockiness and just the sheer winning streak of Duke Zenda. Let's get it going. Brett Storm's going to start this thing off against Keith Alexander. The ref rings the bell. These guys meet in the center of the ring. Brett went for a huge haymaker, but Alexander hits him with a snap suplex instead. Now working the neck of Storm. Not to be confused or not to have any relation with Daniel Storm we saw earlier with Lance Romance. Alexander now working the neck of Brett Storm. So Brett Storm got on Twitter pissed off. Pissed off, folks, about his not getting his opportunities, not getting his due, why he's just been one in a foul mood and just not in the greatest um, 
places on SWF. Look at this. Big knees to the stomach now. And hooking up Alexander. Double suplex. Nice move there. So Puma basically said, you want opportunities, you're going to have opportunities. You will be on every card heading into the next pay-per-view, which is Southern Stampede held in Mobile, Alabama. So Brett Storm, and he's been performing. He has been performing. He faced off uh, against Ryan Adams at the Gold Rush pay-per-view. He won there. He faced off. Um, I did lose against Amari Williams at episode four of Shootout, and that is where this whole thing started. I mean, just furious. Here comes Coda Fish. Duke, though, big knee right to the chest, upper chest area. Brett Storm has, uh, he's got one thing on his mind. He, of course, everybody wants the gold, but he's here to prove himself. That's a whole nother thing. When you're coming in, not necessarily hunting for championship gold as he stomps the kidneys of fish and just boots him right to the side of the head. Jesus. When you're here to prove yourself, you're a harder worker, and I truly believe that. Oh, my God. Brett Storm bringing Duke back in. These guys, quick tags. They're, they're kind of working like a well-oiled machine here. And look at Duke. Mounts Coda and just starts wailing away. I'm, I'm quite surprised to see this from the birth. And just as I say that, Coda dives out of the way. And Duke lands face first on the turnbuckle. And he cannot reciprocate as he catches a forearm right to the chin. Duke now sends Coda back over and a kick to the side of the face. Coda, oh, he's going to drag him over. Snapmare following up with a big kick to the back. Coda brings back Keith Alexander. Oh, Duke trying to get over to Storm and he rolls out of the way. Oh, knees to the back. But he doesn't capitalize and Alexander, fireman's carry. Oh no. Look at this. Jesus! Oh my God. Keith Alexander just powerbombed Duke Zenda out of the ring. Oh my God. The pain that must be going through the back of Duke Zenda right now. Uh oh. Duke might have some retaliation face first into those steel steps. My God. Oh, Duke went for a super kick. Back into the ring, though. Look at this. Here comes Brett Storm. Duke's going to roll out. Big for him. No, reversed in a single leg drop kick by Keith Alexander. Brett's going to kick him away, though. Picking up Alexander. Brett is essentially alone. Fisherman's carry, brain buster, my goodness. And he's, oh, he was quick to get Alexander back up. Look at this. Earnish from Alexander, center of the ring, and going for the pin. Br Brett's got a kick out. He does. Duke still on the outside, unable to come to his aid. Those 12 to 6 elbows right across the clavicle area. Brett's going to send Alexander hard into the turnbuckle. Look at this. Leg drop across the knee. Duke back up on the ring apron. And oh, Brett really working over that knee of Alexander. You can't stand, you can't win, that's for sure. Alexander Toro. Uh-oh. Oh my God, he's got him locked up. Duke is right there. Is he going to stop this from happening? Is Brett going to tap out? Duke seems to have confidence in Storm. And it is paid off. Look at, oh my God, a, a back headbutt. The back of Brett's head right into the nose. Oh, and a spear. Quickly goes for the pin. One, two, and Coda is able to get in and break it up. Duke rushes over. Coda quickly back out on the turnbuckle. But look at Storm. 
Gearing up and a huge elbow just completely collapses Keith Alexander. Gets him away from the ropes and again goes for the pin. But too close. Code is able to get in there and break that pin up before the ref can even count to one. Coda, or excuse me, Alexander giving a little time to breathe. Tags in Coda Fish. Is Coda gonna get to him? No. Here comes Duke. Big drop kick by Duke Storm. Or, I just combined their names. Duke Zenda and a forearm again. All the momentum just rushed out of Duke's body. Quickly goes for the pin as Coda. Brett's on the outside, but just a one count. My goodness. Chop, no, blocked in a big right hand and a single leg drop kick there. Look at the neck breaker. Big neck breaker from Coda Fish and again working on the neck. Oh my God, he's gonna freaking kill him. Coda, oh, sidestep does Duke. Look at this, back body drop. A big one too. Arm drag there from Coda Fish. He's got Duke back up to his feet. Duke with a fireman's carry reversal. Coda stands back up. Into the corner goes Coda and Brett's back on the, on the apron. Duke stops to talk a little trash. Brett storm right in Coda's ear. Giving him the business. And a big right hand. And here it is. Boom. That's it. That is it, that is what won him the Lone Star Championship. Brett Storm in, around. Oh my God, he kicked out. Coda kicked out, but not before Brett delivered a huge DDT to Keith Alexander, spinning elbow by Coda Fish. He's got him hooked up, look at this. Turning him over into a sharpshooter. And Brett not coming in, he's got all the confidence. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is, I don't, I'm, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Here. Brett thought Duke had it. And Coda Fish taps out Duke Zenda. The birth, ladies and gentlemen, move on to the second round. Well, folks, the final matchup of the night. The team, uh, this is just as freaky to me as Darkness Falls. Evelyn Reeves, ladies and gentlemen, and his tag team partner, somebody who was here a long time ago, is back in S. WF Zach Graves as he carries the lantern down as he always does. Evelyn Reeves stares into the light. The freaks make their way down to the ring. In the final matchup here in the first night of Deuces Wild. Who is gonna go on to face the birth? I'm still I got still I'm shocked. I am shocked that Brett didn't come in and stop that submission. I'm shocked that Duke submitted. As it, as it seemed to have Duke and, and Brett seemed to be kind of in control of that matchup just right up until the very end there. Evelyn's swinging the lamp around. Zach, picks, Zach has it now. The lights go out and come quickly back on the fireflies excited to see what's in store the freaks here now this next tag team their opponents and i guess you could call this the main event their opponents tonight were paired together as they as they didn't choose their own tag team these two guys were the only guys left leo mckay and Seb Abbott, your former Maverick champion, 
Leo in the sleaze. Leo McKay is fired up. He is much like Vice in that these guys just fight. They're small, but they don't let that stop them. They come in match after match after match and just straight fight each other, much like James Gaines as well. Leo McKay. Always uh, last season as well, Leo, uh, including this season, has been right at the cusp of something fantastic. And, uh, and something always happens. The sleaze, Seb Abbott, your television champion last season, which that title was merged with the Internet Championship and the Maverick Championship was created. He held that title for all of one month before losing it to Jay Wolf. As we saw him come out, and it looked like a child's toy around Jay's waist. Leo McKay, ready to go. These fans are fired up. A lot riding on this match for all four of these men. The Sleaze, Seb says, get in there, and oh my God. Evelyn's gonna start things off with a kick right to the chin of Leo McKay and drag him. This is not like Leo McKay. This is not like him to have something like this happen. Diving on Leo. Evelyn just starts pounding away. Leo is off tonight. Fireman's carry by Evelyn Reeves. Oh, Leo jumps out of it, quickly gets shot into the corner. Look at this, from one side of the ring to the other, and he's not done. Reeves takes him to the other side. My goodness, got him up, but Leo's able to back out of it. Big clothesline into the corner, sends Reeves down to a seated position. Jeez. Those boots right into the chest. Leo probably makes a good call here early on, brings in Seb Abbott. Now Seb came out along, uh, well actually he's been here for quite some time. He started SWF under a different name. Look at, oh geez. Look at Evelyn. Flipping pile driver to the sleaze and goes down for the pin. No, just a one count. Seb Abbott been around for quite some time. Was that television champion he won from a tournament. Oh. Zach Graves not knocking down the big man. And he slaps him away and he drops him with a forearm right to the forehead. And then a falling fist drop. Seb Abbott looks to be catching his stride here. Jeez Louise, that commentator's curse. Oh, jeez. Graves went for a clothesline, but Seb countered it with a bookend type move. Into the corner goes Graves, but he kicks himself out of it. That time... He sends Abbott down, and here comes Leo McKay. Big drop kick to Zach Graves, getting back up to his feet. Kick to the midsection. Spinning neck breaker, my goodness. Uh-oh, jawbreaker. I wonder how that mohawk affects his jawbreakers. Leo's gonna get Zach Graves right in the midsection with those elbows. Sends him across the ring, following right behind him in a forearm to the chin. Jeez. And now working on that right arm, slamming him down into the mat. Slamming him down, and Leo McKay looks to be back in true form here. What's he doing here? I don't know if that's smart. Over, and a jumping neck breaker. And quickly calling Reeves, or excuse me, Graves up to his feet. Look at this, time to 
Roll the dice. Snake eyes, baby. Leo McKay, center of the ring, gets Zach Graves. The ref stands between his partner and Evelyn Reeves. Reeves catches him. No. Oh, these guys here in the ring. My goodness. The ref has got to get control of this match. Michinoku driver by Graves, and Leo McKay jumps up and hits him with a Hurricane Rana. My goodness. This is an opportunity. Leo McKay has an opportunity with Reeves on the outside. Oh my God, stretching the arms and the chest of Graves. And again, gonna lock it in. More so the chest as you're splayed open. Look at that. Oh geez. Oh, and quickly rolling it over for a pin. One, two. G oh, whoa. Oh man, a zigzag to Reeves sends him rolling to the outside. Graves maybe looking for his partner, but nobody's there in a clothesline. Sends Leo McKay down and a jump on the elbow. My gosh. Ah, you're going to have to do more than that, Graves. A one count. Evelyn Reeves begins to stir on the outside. Headlock. Re reverse chin hold, whatever you want to call that. Zach has got it locked in deep. Oh, my goodness. Leo McKay being pulled up to his feet now. Gets out of that one. Shot to the chest. Reversal by Graves. Uh-oh. Face first goes Leo. And that could be it for Leo in the sleaze. And the ref comes in and tosses Leo, or excuse me, tosses Seb Abbott out of the way. And in turn, knocks Graves down. I'm confusing them. Knocks Reeves down. Graves up top. Oh, my God. He went for a red arrow. And Leo McKay got the knees up. Into the corner he goes, and both guys hit Graves. Seb from the back and Leo from the front. Stomping the hand. Oof. And Leo McKay again. Getting Graves ready to roll the dice. Snake eyes again, and Graves is busted open. Leo goes down for the pin. One, two, and Reeves is able to break it up. Seb gets a shot to the face. But Leo saves that whole thing. Up, he's got him up in a gut buster military press. I'm telling you, Leo can fight and he's strong as hell. One, two, and that's it. That military press gut buster sealed the deal for Leo in the sleaze. And that, folks, is how we end he night number one. Leo McKay, Leo McKay and, and Seb Abbott move on to face the birth. Ebony and Ivory are taking on Los Welsh. Dogs of War, Jay Wolf and Ryan Adams taking on the Fallen Kingdom. Rap and Rock Connection take on Fight and Flight and SDC and Vice. We'll see you in night two of Deuces Wild.